remember how you told me that life may not be easy and everything that I need you've already given me I remember how you told me Phenomenon of revival. Samuel was a young man. Um, Hannah had prayed for him, and you remember sometimes on Mother's Day I preach about Hannah. 
She prayed for her child. Elkanah, her husband, had another wife as well. And, you know, she had some youngins, and Hannah did not have any youngins. So um, the other wife looked down on Hannah. But finally, Hannah prayed. She went to the temple. And you remember the, the priest even thought she was drunk because she was praying and crying out for the Lord, but no words were coming out of her mouth. And so finally she had a little boy named Samuel. Samuel went on to become a prophet of Israel. And she told the Lord, she said, Lord, if you will just give me a son, I will give him back to you. And so therefore when Samuel was just a wee little lad, she packed him up, packed up all his clothes and took him to Eli, the high priest, and said, Here is my child. I'm leaving him with you. I have dedicated him to the Lord, and I'll come up periodically. They would go up and worship. And he said, Every time I, she said, Every time I come up to worship, I'll come see him and bring him some clothes and bring him food and all that. But you teach him about God. And so, therefore, that's what she did. And it says in... Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli she carried through with her promise I know when my two children were born I said Lord they're yours and I know a lot of you did the same thing we want the Lord's blessing on our children but Samuel had some hard words for Eli one day. He had a dream and, and he went in and he, he thought that Eli had called him and he said, son, I haven't called you. And he went, he said, go back and go back to bed. So he went back to bed and he heard his voice and he thought Eli was calling him again. So he goes in there and he says, son, I've not called you, go back to bed. So he did it a third time and Eli finally wised up and he said, the Lord's trying to talk to you. So when you hear that again, say, your servant is here and he's listening. What do you have to say? So he did that. And Eli's two sons were wicked. And they were just real bad. And God told Samuel to tell Eli that he, got, he better get his two sons straight. Because they were wicked and they were ministering there in Israel. And they were doing all kinds of bad things. And if not, God was going to kill him. That was his first message. So that's kind of the setting of, of Samuel and then he went on he was anointed as a prophet and he would say thus saith the Lord to all of Israel well during this time Israel had backslid real bad so God called Samuel to be the prophet and revival is a phenomenon because we get up and we preach week after week after week and sometimes God doesn't move but then all of a sudden God will get a hold of one or two people and get them fired up and then revival starts. Well, we're in the same shape that Israel was in years ago. So, first of all, they were guilty of indulgence. They did anything if it feels good, do it. And that's what even all the commercials say. Grab all the gusto you can get. You only go around one time. And just we are in the, the area and in the, the mode of if it feels good, do it. And it's okay for me regardless of what anybody else thinks. We're guilty of indulgence. Would you agree with me on that? Well, that's where we're at, aren't we? If it feels good, do it. Don't worry about it. This is me. I don't have to answer to anybody. Don't worry about it. And then we indulge. But folks, if we're going to be right with God, if we're going to have revival, we have got to come off of that indulgence. We have got to go back to God's Word, back to His law, and back to His way of living. But secondly, Israel was guilty of immorality. Y'all know what immorality is. They were doing everything with everybody. And that's about where we're at too. Again, all the commercials point to that. They can't even sell a bar of soap without a half-naked woman presenting that bar of soap. Am I right? Or shampoo or anything else. But thirdly, they were 
guilty of indifference. And we are definitely there. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. Let those that want to worship God, worship God. Let those that want to do this, do that. Let those that want to do something else, do that. And we don't care, just leave me alone. That's where we're at. But it does matter what somebody else does. Your sins affect me and my sins affect you. And if you don't believe that, read the story of Achan. But we're talking about the phenomenon of revival. Israel was in a bad state of affairs. Just like we're in a bad state of affairs. They were doing everything they were doing. But God used Samuel in a mighty way to bring revival to Israel. And folks, we've got to have something happen to get revival here in America. The meaning of revival. First of all, it is a fresh communication of God's word. Look at verse chapter 3, verse 20. And all of Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. They knew that he was God's man. So therefore, when he started preaching and teaching about God's word, they started listening. So, first of all, revival means a fresh communication of God's Word. Are you in God's Word? Do you read God's Word? Or do you just bring your Bible, bring it to church, and when you come home, you throw it on the dresser or on the coffee table, and that's it for the rest of the week until next Sunday morning? It is the most sold book. It's the number one selling book in America, but it's the least read. Folks, we got to get in God's Word. we got to have a fresh communication of what God is telling us. And the only way to do that is get in God's Word and read it and study it and pray and talk to God about His Word. Secondly, it, revival involves a fresh consciousness of God's presence with His people. The Lord revealed Himself for all the people from Dan to Beersheba to let them know that Samuel was the prophet. Folks, there are preachers in pulpits that preach their heart out every week, and the congregation just sits there and says, bless me if you can. Am I right? That's where we're at. And the reason they do that is because they're not in God's Word. They're not having a, a, a fresh communication with God. But if you would have a fresh communication with God, you would understand that when the Lord's man preaches, he is trying to, to motivate you and to move you and to get you off your seat and do nothing to get revived. And folks, we need to be revived. And number three, revival also includes a fresh commitment to God's requirements. How committed are you to the Lord? Do you, I mean, do you hear me when I'm talking here? How committed are you to God? Are you just a little bit committed? Or are you all in? You see, when us men go hunting, we're all in. We love it. We buy camouflage, we buy hats, we buy guns, we buy trucks, we buy stuff for our trucks so that we can get in and out of the, the mud holes. And we do all kinds of things and we spend all kinds of money just so we can go hunting. And it's fun. We have a good time. How many hunters have we got here? Got a few. Do you spend any money on your equipment? Okay, how about some of the things you ladies do? When you do that, you're all in, aren't you? You spend money on making new dresses, new this, new that, or whatever hobby you're doing, and you get involved with it, you're all in. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with hunting. Nothing wrong with fishing. Nothing wrong with going shopping or whatever you ladies get involved in. Nothing wrong with that. 
But what I'm trying to point out is when you do something, you're all in. Why not do that for God? When it comes to God, are you all in? Or do you just have some fire insurance? And what I mean by that is you walk the aisle, you've given your heart to God just so that you won't go to hell, but you go out and live any old way you want to, but you know and you think you're saved because you walk down the aisle. But folks, when you get saved, you get committed to God and you're all in. And that's the way it's supposed to be. And folks, if we don't start acting like we're all in, we're never going to have revival. And we got to start acting like we're all in, just like us men do with the hunting and fishing, and just like you ladies do with, with cooking and shopping and all that kind of stuff. we got to get all in when it comes to God and when it comes to His church and when it comes to things of God. We've got to get all in. So the meaning of revival, the meaning of revival is we got to get all in. Samuel was all in. Samuel was all in from birth. His mama prayed for him. And then when he was old enough, she took him to the temple and said, He's yours, Eli. You raise him up and teach him of the things of God so that he can go out and proclaim God's word the rest of his life. He was all in. She was all in. We've got to get all in. But then the medium of revival. The Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh, and the word of the Lord came to him. I believe it's in chapter 4, verse 1. And the word of the Lord, or excuse me, and the word of Samuel came to all Israel. God spoke to him. God said, you tell Israel about all of this. And go back to, to chapter 3, verse 21. The word came to him and he communicated it to all of Israel. And that's my job. I pray all week and I study and I try to say, God, what do you want me to tell them? And then he tells me and then I come and tell you. That's the preacher's job. Samuel was called by God to preach to Israel just like I've been called to come here to be your pastor to tell you what God is telling me to tell you. But sometimes... We just sit there with deaf ears. We sit there like, like knots on a log. And we say, oh well. Or we say, well, Brother Andy was a little stirred up today. I wonder what's bothering him. Folks, what's bothering me is we're not having revival. We're just sitting here and doing nothing. We've got to get up. We've got to be all in. Are you all in? We've got to be all in. Samuel went and didn't matter life or death and they tried killing him just like they tried killing Paul and all the rest of the prophets. And he, they, they in him said, Thus saith the Lord. But the message of revival. Samuel said in chapter 7, you got to return back to God. I believe it's chapter 7, verse 1, so we're right on there. He said, Here, Israel, listen to me. God's told me what to tell you. Return back to God. You see, Israel was God's chosen people. And they would start out way up here, high on the mountain with God. And then they would start worshiping false gods. And they would start worshiping idols. And then they would start falling. And then they would get real low. And God would have another country come in and take them captive. And cause problems there. And then they would repent. And they would cry out, oh God, why has this happened? And then they would get right. And God would bring them back up on the mountain again. But then the same thing would happen. It was just a vicious cycle. Same thing happens with us. We'll get all fired up for God. We'll come to church. We'll do everything we can. Then we get tired. Then we sit down. We'll say, let the younger ones do it. Let the other ones do it. Let, let them do it. Let, do it. let the preacher do it. Let the deacons do it. And we just sit there. But I'm telling you, like Samuel told Israel, we got to return back to God. Y'all look at me. Everybody look at me in the eyes. We got to return back to God. Have you returned back to God? Everything you're doing, does it honor and please God? If it don't, get rid of it and get back to returning to God. we got to be all in. It's all or nothing, folks. That's the message of revival. 
But then the mark of revival over in chapter 7, I believe it's verse 6. Or let's start in verse 5. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered to Mizpah, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord, and they fasted that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. The marks of revival, there's got to be confession of sin. You see, we like our sin, don't we? We pet our sin. We pamper our sin. Because we like it. We'll do everything over here, but leave my sin alone. Well, Brother Randy, you're meddling. You're talking about my sin. Well, that's the problem. Okay? You see, we keep it over here and we pet it and we pamper it. We throw a little money to it. Sometimes we throw lots of money to it, don't we? But everything's okay. Just don't mess with this. And we can even come to church, even though we have our sin. We can gossip, we can talk about people, we can drug, we can drink, we can do everything. We can run around, we can do it all. Just leave it alone. I'll still come to church on Sunday morning. Just leave this alone over here. This is mine. Nobody knows about it, but you know what? Most people do know about that right there. In your life and in my life. And we all have it. When I point my finger at you, i got three pointing back at me. So nobody is not guilty in here this morning. We all have sin. But the thing I'm trying to tell you is, until we get serious about repenting over our sin, and repent means that we change from that. We stop doing it and we take a different course. Like when I was on drugs and alcohol, I was all involved in this. But when I got saved and I repented of it, I left that alone and I turned and I started going this way. And now I don't do all that drugging and drinking and all that goes with that. Amen? It means you turn. The, the Greek word is metanoia. It means you don't do it anymore. There's a complete turn, a complete change. And until we get serious about our sin and have a change from our sin, we will never experience revival in our personal life or corporately in our church life. Are y'all with me? You, you understand? Am I very clear this morning? I'm not missing words. Everybody understand me? Folks, we've got to get serious. That is one of the marks of revival. That's why when we have invitation, I say, if you need to come to the altar, come to the altar. That's what it's for, folks. And just because you come to the altar doesn't mean you're a bad person. You have lots of sin. You may just want to pray for somebody. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'll tell you what, let's do this. Everybody's got sin. I'm going to repent. Come to this side. Everybody that has a loved one that's sick or something want to pray come to this side. How about that? Now I really messed y'all up, man. Now ain't nobody coming. <laughs> and you can repent of your sin right now where you sit. <coughs> but what I'm saying is we've got to do something. Folks, look where America is at. We have went from way up here to having God in the schools, having prayer in the schools, having prayer in the government, having God in the government, to way down here in the muck and mire where we've kicked God out of everything. And it's us Christians who have allowed that to happen because we're sitting in the pew like a knot on the wall. <coughs> Another mark of revival is praising God. You know, we talked about that last Sunday night in the lesson on experience of God, worshiping God. Everybody raise your hand a minute. See, y'all can raise your hand. And y'all are not Pentecostal. There's no... If, if, everybody say amen. amen. See, y'all can say amen without being Pentecostal too. Can you clap your hands? 